Today we continue with the second part of the story of Ralph Gemmell. Ralph has made the decision that he's going to commit himself to be part of the church community that lives literally in exile in its own country and are subject to persecutions, to imprisonments, to death, because they want to fight and live for civil and religious liberty. And it's hard for us, maybe where we are today, to think that that's a reality. But that is reality for some people in other parts of the world, even as we have experienced the freedoms we have now. And it does remind us that we should never take these things for granted, because they have been hard won at the cost of sometimes many people's lives. So Ralph writes to his father, and this is what he says. I know that what I'm now about to say to you will not please you. I wish I could both please you and obey God at the same time. But I can't be an enemy to God's people. I can't live with those who persecute them. And I don't want to deny my Saviour, lest he would deny me one day before his Father. So therefore, Father, please pardon my disobedience. Since I'm determined to associate with those who are persecuted, He continues in and says many other things, but that's the essence of what he says to his father. In response to this, his father then says, Ralph, yes, return home and live with me. No, never. My door shall be forever shut against you. I will even tear the very remembrance of you from my heart. For you've not only disregarded my pleas, you've not only rejected my kindness and disappointed my hopes, but you've allied yourself to the vilest and guiltiest traitors and disgraced my name and my house. You know, sometimes it's really hard to be a Christian, especially when those who stand against us are members of our own family, who don't understand the the decisions that we've made and how precious our Saviour is to us. And so for some time, Ralph decided that all he could do was leave home and find work as best he could. He had been disinherited in every way. And so he found work with the odd farmer here and there. He laboured along with the locals and sometimes he had to beg for bread. And he succeeded in remaining free and out of the reach of the law for a couple of years. But that was to end. At a worship service in Renfrewshire, He was arrested along with everybody else and he was taken to Edinburgh and he was put in prison. And after sentencing, he or after his trial and sentencing, he he was sentenced to death. And everybody except one or two who were willing to take the test, that is the test we mentioned prior to this, where they would uh, recant their faith and recant their loyalty to those who were Christians who believed in the form of worship that was being conducted by the Presbyterians and the Covenanters, everyone, apart from those who took the test, were to be executed the next day, which meant that they would then have their heads and their hands cut off their bodies, and they would be fixed to the city gates to discourage other people from following their example. And so Ralph, now in prison, this time, unlike the first time, He is determined with calmness and peacefulness to face what he believes will be his last day. He knows the Lord Jesus is with him. He has grown in his faith over the last few years, having already paid the price of losing his family and all the privileges privileges that went with being brought up in a a fairly well-to-do family. The next day, unexpectedly, the, the guard opens his prison cell and ushers in one of his uncles. His uncle had heard about the situation and although his father had no interest in pursuing him and regarded that he was just going to get his just desserts, the uncle just wouldn't, he just couldn't sit peacefully and watch one of his family circle being sent to his death. And so he said, I have been able to appeal on your behalf, Ralph, and we have got your sentence of death commuted to exile. And you can be sent away to serve as a slave in one of the colonies of the empire. But if you were to if you were to take the test and you were to be willing to obey the laws of the land as they are, you could get your freedom this very day. There was a sort of a moment of hesitation for Ralph. You can understand. I mean, here's an open door to go out and live life and 
You can just imagine what prospects that would mean. Or going off to be a prisoner, a slave, to who knows what, most likely a death in a very unpleasant environment. But after some thought, Ralph says to his uncle, look, I'm really deeply, deeply thankful. I don't want you to take it the wrong way. But he says, I will choose exile and slavery because I will choose Jesus Christ, my Saviour, and following him the way he has taught me in Scripture. And yet, what we do see is that God has intervened in his case. I know there are other, you, we can ask the question, well, what about all the other people? God didn't intervene in theirs. But of course, that's where we sometimes fail to understand. As Paul says, for me, to live as Christ, to die is gain. And it challenges us as to whether we really believe that or not. Ralph was put aboard a ship at Leith. And if you're in Edinburgh, you can go down to Leith. And that's where the um, the ship that the Queen would have travelled in, uh, it's there. And you can go on board it. And at that same place, he was sent off to a plantation in Jamaica. Uh, in Jamaica. The treatment on board ship <clears throat> was harsh and cruel. They were kept under under guard. They were locked in all the time. They were fed very little. The captain was a cruel man with no sympathies for what they believed. And when they came close to Jamaica, there was a change in the weather. First of all, it became really, really calm. And then just like that came a furious tempest. The prisoners were still locked in the hold and they appealed to be freed, but the ship's captain had no interest in that. He was more concerned about himself. And when the ship ran aground, he ordered the longboat to be lowered and he escaped with most of the crew, all except one or two who just could not leave the prisoners to the fate of being drowned. But the Bible does remind us that it's God who holds the waters in his hands and he intervened. The longboat with the captain and most of the crew was not far from the ship when a couple of powerful waves caused it to capsize and all the sailors in it were swept away and drowned. Those sailors who had stayed on board freed the prisoners and they all fell to pumping to keep the ship afloat. And so they were saved. But they were saved to spend six years as slaves on the plantations in Jamaica, which was a tough and a harsh environment. Little is told about how Ralph lived then, but he was free to worship, and those who were there because of their Christian faith were able to meet under the trees and praise God as they believed that was right. It was better to be free to worship God in Jamaica than to be slaves to the persecution in Scotland in their mind. But six years passed, he survived it, and he was given his freedom. Ships took them back, headed for Greenock, and on the way he arrived at Irvine. And there, on that day he arrived, it was a Sunday, and he walked to worship, and he was amazed and surprised to discover that the persecutions had now ended. You could go freely to worship. The man in the pulpit was one of the old preachers he'd known. And the old preacher said to him, after the service was over, he says, you know, I'll go with you tomorrow and take you to introduce you again to your father and your brother. For life has changed for them. The father had become, had become ill, and the brother was weighed down with guilt over what had happened. And in a very touching experience and time of forgiveness and reconciliation, Ralph was able to reaffirm to them his commitment and love for them because of his love for Jesus. And the final words that are put in this little, this short little summary of Ralph's story are that God will never leave nor forsake all who put their trust in him. As I was reflecting on this little story, I couldn't help think that we're living through a day when I think some people are tempted to step back for the desire of comfort and maybe even for the fear of losing other people's approval, which is a very dangerous cocktail. On the one hand, we need to be warned about that as a dangerous and foolish thing. But on the other hand, we need to be attracted all the more to enjoy the life of faith and service to our Saviour who has given it to us. Some people are struggling to reconnect with their church. I think those who are willing to suffer through the persecutions that we read about here 
have something to say to us about reconnecting and about reinvesting our, our lives and doing that which the Lord calls us to do when we know we can, to love him and serve him and worship him as he so is worthy of. And may the Lord help you and I to do that, even this weekend, if it's possible. <laughs>